Hello, friends. Welcome back to Sim Golf. Last episode, we well uprooted ourselves completely. We went on to a new sort of area in Phoenix this time, which is desert, Phoenix, Nevada, of course. And we created uh, five more holes, which isn't going to be holes six to ten. It's of course holes one to five, just on a different course this time. We went round our new course, we went round in two under par, which is not bad. And just at the end of the episode, we were challenged to a match by Joe Pro. So, we're going to go ahead and take this match. Now, I'd like to get this as close to the middle of the fairway as I can. That'll probably do. That's, yep, straight down the middle. Certainly better than our drive the last time out. How do you like that shot, Joe Pro? You know, with 2,000 simoleons on, on offer for each hole, I, I bet he probably doesn't like that shot much. He certainly won't like his next shot. That's going to be a good couple of hundred yards, I think. Oh, no, actually 150. I'd imagine mine's about 110. One, closer to 120. He's going for the high backspin shot. Is he going to get it back in bounds? Just. However, my shot should be significantly closer. We got a lucky bounce there, apparently. Knocked it to about 20 feet or so, I would say. Joe Pro has put his fairly close. We have a top 100 hole. Hole 2, now known as Dogwood. Let's... Let's put everything to accurate irons. I know it's a strange one. I definitely have big plans to upgrade my course, expand my course. I think best bet here will be to buy tracked three or six. I like the idea of buying six now and then three in a in a while. That's not much land, but we can. By the sound of things, we've won the first hole. Yep, three to four. Yeah, what we can do is we could suck this fairway into here a little bit. And then we'd have a little bit more room to expand this way. People are complaining the shot looks easy on the fourth. Hmm. Let's see how that makes it harder for you. In fact, let's make it doubly difficult. There's the new fairway. Enjoy that. A lot of sim golf is essentially just tweaking your holes, gradually making them a little bit better at a time. Joe Pro, I think that's probably from just the edge of the fairway there. How far have we got? 138. We can. It's about the upper reaches of um, how far our high backspin shot can go, but we can pop this one very close. Two feet of the pin, let's go. So Joe Pro has a good hundred yards to go here. He's not even put that one particularly close.
So we're definitely going to win this hole. And we're going to win it by two full shots as well. Yep, that's a bogey. Drew wins hole two by a score of three to five. 167 yards. We could actually, from the tees, we could probably hit our high backspin about 180. We've got a Dutch windmill to add to our course. I'm not, I'm not wild on that for the moment. We have hit our tee shot to within four feet of the pin. So that looks like another birdie for us. And Joe Pro's, well, wildly taken his into some bushes. I think the idea of the pot bunkers put him off. Uh, do we have course information? Course report. So I may need to look into hole one and possibly switch it around a little bit. At the moment it's not looking like a good hole at all. Not to worry. We'll see where that goes for the next little while. Joe Pro has knocked his second into the bunker beside the green, so again. Definitely looks like we're winning this hole. It looks like we're going to win it by a good couple of shots again. That's a double bogey. And a birdie for me. So we're, now we're six shots ahead. Again, people were complaining about how easy this hole looks, so... Let's give them some cacti to worry about. Does it? It's, um... This area in somewhat. Give him a little rough round the other side to contend with as well. Now I think this is actually going to make the hole more difficult for me and not for anyone else. Oh. I'd like to put it in the middle of these two. That's okay. That's more like it, I think. So, 83 yards with the wedge. Pop this one up and down. Very close to the hole. A couple of feet. That's another birdie. And a bogey for Joe Pro by the looks of things. Four birdies so far. Course record looms. Is it? I don't think this looks particularly tough. People are complaining their shots look pretty easy from the fairway.
Well, we know what to do there, don't we? Pop some water at the back of the hole. Can we? Apparently not. Okay, maybe we can't actually... Um, modify that because it was an oil well before. Doesn't look like it. Nope. I don't want to quit yet. Joe Pro's going in the bunker. An easy hundred, uh, 124 yards. Pop this one up and over. And we'll get it fairly close. Lucky bounce, Joe Pro, into the bunker. So it's a straight run of birdies. Versus some pretty awful play from Joe Pro. I finish five under. Joe Pro. Six over, yes. So we won every hole, we won the match. And we'll boost our power hitting skills. We do need to get a skill upgrade, which could prove quite difficult. Check our SGA evaluation. We can have a tournament. The SGA Players Championship. I don't think we'll do that for now. We will, however, have a match against Paula Putter with our 150% skill rating of accurate putter. So essentially, as long as she reaches the green, She'll probably pop it in. Could make her a difficult opponent. I'm sorry, we're not renaming the hole. We just want to talk to Gilbert. Well, not talk to him, but... I think Boris is playing with... Uh, Boris is playing with... Alan. Alan doesn't appear to be around. Which is very strange. Paula Putter has put hers onto the fairway. A good 75 yards back from mine. Okay, fine, 65, whatever. Boris has finished the first hole, and because Alan seems to have disappeared, I think he's going back to the clubhouse. Good round, Boris. The game can be a little bit glitchy on occasion. Again, I won't judge. I think it was a fairly low budget game, actually. For being a Sid Meier game, anyway. Paula Putter, with her 150% skill in putting, has missed one. I've no I have, however, knocked mine in, so. Win hole one by three to four. Again, we're on a bit, little bit of a birdie streak here. Yeah, it, I've got to hit it past the desert, but let's be honest, I have more than enough power to do so. And by the looks of things, yeah, I'm on the narrow part of the fairway.
Paula doesn't have the same kind of power as we do, so that's going to be a good 100 yards short of mine. Yeah, 105. Iron Picky does like our course. We are, of course, going to buy, well, would like to buy three or nine? Let's go with nine. I was going to go with three. However, this does give us a good area, and we're likely to be playing that way. We're down the screen almost. I'll quietly get out of the way of Paula's shot. 130 yards. Just a quick knock onto the green, I think. Get that one fairly close. Paula will not get hers close. She's put it in the bush. At no point was Paula's ball closer to the hole than mine. That's more like it. So the first two holes have gone exactly the same way as they did in the last match. 3-4 to four and 3-5. to five. This one was 3-6, to six, so we'll see if that... 2-6, uh, to six, sorry. So we'll see if that repeats. Or is it 2-5? to five? I think it may have been 2-5. to five. I know it was 3 shots, so yeah, it will have been. That looks like being a 2 for us. And if Paula can't put this one on the green, she may be in trouble. Well, it's in one of the pot bunkers. That could be worse. Certainly, Joe Pro ended up in this area here. Ah, then he also went from one bunker to the other, so... Oh, Paula's gone the opposite way. <laughs> From the bunker to the bushes. And still in the messy stuff. We have a civil war cannon to add to our course. That's going to be six strokes for Paula Putter on this hole. And two for us. Eight birdies in a row now. If this was Call of Duty, our kill streak would be quite, quite something. As it happens, we're just killing it out here on the course. Aha! That's a very long drive, actually. Ah, 300 yards. And because of the way the hole is, it still leaves us almost 300 to the pin. Paul has popped one in the water. First victim I've seen of the water in this hole. And indeed, since we started playing, actually. I think? Maybe not. Um, judging by that shot, you should have played it safe. Let's try and fire this one as far up the fairway as we can. That's very good. So we're going to have a little chip here 
from maybe 40 yards or so. Thirty-eight yards. And we've not holed it, but it's close. We'll sink that for our birdie, no problem. And a triple bogey for Paula puts her ten over par. Does it? No. Seven over par, sorry, not ten. Getting myself a little, a little confused. I thought she bogeyed the first and went downhill from there, but it was a par. That's not our best shot. Yeah, you hooked that one a lot. It looks like our birdie streak will be ending at nine, which is slightly disappointing. Yeah, I don't like that shot. Sorry. I don't like the path either that people are taking to get around here, so... Let's play risky here. We've won we've won the match anyway. And we've <laughs> we have actually put that one on the green. Via the bunker, no less. It'll be very interesting to see if we hold this. knocks hers in for a par. Very rare for her. And we have indeed birdied the fifth hole from a terrible position, keeping our birdie streak very much intact. So we'll just have a quick look around here. 0.6 for the, first, uh, the fifth hole, 0.4 for the fourth. Again, round about 0.4 for the third, 0.3 for the second, and oh, a full one and a one and a bit strokes over par on average for the first hole, and yet it's still. I think these numbers are slightly anomalous, but they are seeming to get more pronounced. Anyway, I'll keep an eye on that. I may need to rejig that hole around somewhat. And I think I'll do that in the next episode. Hole 3 has been rated as one of the best 100 holes in the country by Golf Inquirer magazine. As has hole 1, despite not being a very good hole at all. Now this is actually just before I go. I've noticed I have one silver member on site. So I can create a home site. And that will just give me a little bit of money essentially. Depending on where I put it. Depends on, it uh, decides how much money it's actually worth. We have a match against Jetstream Pro, but we won't be playing that yet. We're going to pop this home site down just here. And people are going to think, oh, what an ugly home site that is. However, as I'll reveal in the next episode, we can reap some benefits from that too. So, I'm going to end this here for now. Thanks for watching, friends, and like I say, let me know. Oh, the house has appeared. Let me know if you're enjoying this series. If you're not enjoying it, I may stop it. We'll decide later. Anyway, see you guys in the next episode 
of SimGolf. Bye for now!